always have to learn to trust him more. You never stop arriving until we make heaven our home. I still have to get up, put feet to my faith, even if it's slow, even if it's baby steps forward, incremental progress is still progress. And I'm still gonna accomplish my goal as long as I keep moving forward. Hey there, I'm Matthew Foley and this is ISO Insights, where God's truth grows in the midst of current culture, renewing the mind and spirit. Welcome back to International School of the Words podcast, ISO Insights. And today we are lucky to have Pastor Don Lipsy as a guest here for the podcast. Don is the author of I Can, I Will, a book to encourage Christians that are tired and nearly ready to give up. She reminds brothers and sisters in Christ that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. She's a marathon runner, mother of three, and serves alongside her husband, pastoring South Cleveland Church of God. Dawn also has a very special connection to this ministry uh, because she's one of our teachers here. She was a teacher for our course, Women in Ministry. She's one of the most uh, influential speakers, especially here in Cleveland, uh, on topics such as marriage, motherhood, ministry, and career. And in this course that we had for her here at ISO, she discusses theology of the trinity of relationships, male-female relationships, uh, how women will operate within ministry, and how the whole family, all the whole Whole church unit can operate as one at the body of Christ. So Don, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you for teaching at ISO for your contribution to the body of Christ. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. What a joy. What an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So kicking it right off, I just want to focus in, um, when did you feel the call to ministry? Was there a moment that it happened? You know, I think mine was very gradual. I uh, accepted the Lord when I was four years old, Mm, and I attribute that, of course, to my parents, and my my dad led me to the Lord. But uh, as I grew, I could feel that there was hunger, something Mm. more within me. I didn't quite know what that was. Um, I really felt like I wanted to uh, be a a pastor's wife or a ministry wife, and that has, of course, developed past just being, you know, the wife side of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So mine was actually somewhat gradual, but I really wrestled with that in high school because um, I came from a a family that didn't have a great financial means, Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to be a neurosurgeon um, so that I would uh, be wealthy, honestly, Mm -hmm. and so I really struggled between one and the other uh, because at that point in my life, I never really knew of any people in ministry that had wealth. (laughs) And so I didn't want to live and struggle. And so there was a clash between that. But at 18, uh, 17, 18, that's where the Lord said, make your choice. Mm. And uh, I wanted a life of fulfillment, not just of wealth. Mm. And so um, it was at that point that I chose the Lord and his direction for my life. Wow, and I, I know you had said we had uh, we, we looked at your biographies, so we're just spying. Uh, but I know you, you said earlier before the interview, you know, you live your life as an open book. Mm-hmm. And when we were looking into um, your ministry site, we saw that that in your childhood you actually went through something that's pretty rough. Your father was paralyzed. Yes. Um, so what was that experience like? Um, how did that impact your childhood? I, I know that it encouraged you to become what you call a speaker of hope. Yes. Uh, what's that story? Yes. Um, even though I was not the one who mm-hmm. actually experienced the physical difficulty, when I was an infant, my dad was injured uh, working for the railroad. And, oh, wow. Um, Within a, a day or two, he was completely paralyzed for, mm-hmm. from the waist down. And, uh, you know, it was years before my dad walked again. They, uh, the doctors had given up hope on him and told him to quit trying. You know, my dad would, would go to therapy and he would continue to push himself. Mm-hmm. And he had a believing mom, you know, that was praying for him. He had a wife that stood by him. And he, uh, he's one of the greatest examples of perseverance mm-hmm. still to this day for me to see because it didn't happen right away. Right. Mm -hmm. Most things in life don't happen right away. We have to have that ability to persevere. James is one of my favorite books and it talks about that. But I was really too young to understand the implications of it because I was so tiny. But I believe by the time I was three, my dad was a miracle walking. Um, Mm -hmm. He despite what the doctors told him. But when I was old enough for my dad to explain the story of of what happened to him, he he told me and he said, the doctor said, quit trying, Mm -hmm. just quit trying, accept it and Mm -hmm. just quit trying. 
something inside of me gripped my heart, even as a, as a young girl, uh, 10 years old maybe at that point, to think, why would somebody say, quit trying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it. And uh, at that point, that's where I decided I was going to be a neurosurgeon. Wow. And uh, I was going to help people walk again. And mm -hmm. I was always going to give them hope that they could walk again. Because who would tell somebody, stop trying? And so as I grew into my teen years, I always wanted to be a doctor, a neurosurgeon specifically, so I could help people walk again. Mm -hmm. And it was in this battle between earning this great wealth of being a neurosurgeon and following after the Lord. But I had to come to that culmination, you know, about 17, 18 year olds of which way are you going to go, Dawn? Yeah. And at that point, um, I, I did. I followed into ministry, but it was always in the back of my mind. I was still going to be a neurosurgeon. Mm. And about 20, I had to kind of come to the fact that that wasn't going to happen. I couldn't be a neurosurgeon and do what God had called mm. me purposefully to do. But I read a book called Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Yeah. I suggest it to most any person that I talk to, struggling with what is their purpose in life. And through that book, I realized God put that purpose inside of me to help people walk again. But it didn't come in the little box that I tried to fit it into mm -hmm. as a neurosurgeon to help people physically walk again. Because he said, Dawn, I want you to help people walk again to p help people that are stuck and stalled out in life, that they can move forward through whatever tragedy, whatever circumstance, however difficult it is. There's people all over this world who need to walk again, mm. but not just physically. And that's what God's called me to do, help people mm. walk again. And so um, I'm called to give people hope, mm. just like doctors do physically. I give people hope today, and I'm called to be a hope speaker, whatever it looks like, whether it be on a podcast or one-on-one, -on -one, whatever yeah. I am and wherever I'm going, I'm going to give hope away. And I'm sure that's the spirit of the book, I Can, I Will. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is, because there's always going to be something more that we go through. We never just go through one problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there will be many troubles, right? <laughs> James talks about, again, I go back to that book, and there will be many trials. Um, but uh, I Can, I Will came from a point in my life um, where I was overwhelmed. Mm. Even people in ministry get overwhelmed. We have all kinds of things, and I'm yeah. sure we'll talk about it, of balancing life and ministry and, and our own goals and our own dreams, and they can just be bombarding us all the mm. way around, and we can feel weaker and weaker. And uh, I had to experience him for myself so that I could give hope away over those t types of situations as well. Wow. When it comes to perseverance mm. and hope and joy, what do you think for those that are depressed, discouraged, who feel weighted down, believers, and even if unbelievers are listening to us, people that feel overwhelmed by that distress and hopelessness, what is the key to escaping that? The Bible says, may the God of all hope mm. fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him right? Because he fills us with both of those things when we need hope mm. so that we may overflow with hope. It's a combination. It's like a combustion, um, but it comes as we trust in him. You will always have to learn to trust him more. You mm. never stop arriving until we make heaven our home. Mm. So we have to trust him on new levels. You know, as a teenager, I had to trust him through difficult circumstances. Then as a, as a mom, you know, and then in ministry and then stepping out, uh, I, I believe you must step out and do it afraid. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a fear, at least for me. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't go through those kind of things, but I have a motto, do it afraid. Mm -hmm. Do it afraid because the God of hope will fill me with all joy and peace as I trust him so that I may overflow with hope. Wow. So. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. That's powerful. I like that. I live most of my life that way. Do it afraid. <laughs> Do it even if you are afraid. afraid. I am, you know, usually. <laughs> I, I, there's also... Um, you said you're a marathon runner and you're pastor, author, you're mm. a strong Christian leader, mm. and uh, you, you, you've mentioned on your multiple sites that you love running marathons. Well, uh, there's an analogy that the Bible uses. Yes. Paul uses it in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, and in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, it's used. And it says that Christians are supposed to run a race, and in Hebrews it says that you need to persevere right. when you're on that race. And in Paul, he talks to the Corinthians. First thing, he tells them that they need to grow up spiritually. Yes. <laughs> but then yes, the second uh, thing is he says, what is it like to be a Christian who's persevering and running after God? Well, it's kind of like a race with, with, uh, where you measure it, where you have discipline. Could you speak into that as a marathon runner, as someone who's experienced what it's like to feel the, the temptation to give up? Oh my goodness. I, I preach a whole leadership lesson um, on this, but um, 
it, it likens it for your own race, mm. right? And this is what I love about marathons and most all the other races that I run because I've never won a marathon. I've never been the first mm. person to complete that. Uh, I, I can't even fathom it. Wouldn't it be great? However, that's not what I'm called to do. Mm. It is a goal set for me to be able to cross that finish line. I have a goal to cross the finish line when I meet Jesus. I can't run your race and you can't run mine. We have our own challenges along the way. And I've learned so many things um, by running, but it takes training, Mm -hmm. it takes time, Mm -hmm. it takes discipline. I can't compare my race to other people's races and uh, because I'm going through different things in my own life right, that you might not be going through. And uh, I've learned through so many different races that I go through. Uh, You know, I have to forget those things which are behind, right? And I press on. I press on because there's been many times that even in the training portion, I would like to quit. (laughs) It can get tedious. It can get long. My mind can be distracted. But if I don't train and if I don't persevere, I never finish the race, Mm -hmm. right? And um, I've run Uh, quite a few. We have a goal to run a marathon in all 50 states. I think I've done 15 now. And uh, so there's there's different uh, analogies that I learned through every single race. Um, One of them, I'll just kind of tell you when we did the uh, rock and roll uh, Las Vegas marathon Mm -hmm. and you run through Las Vegas at nighttime. It's one of the ones that everybody wants to do for that particular state. Right. And, you know, um, it was cold there that night. And so I, I always take my nutrition, my water, all my different things with me. Now, my husband, he never runs with anything. He's mm-hmm. amazing. He's the best athlete yeah. I know. But me, I'm always prepared. That's my life right there, always yeah. prepared. And, um, but on the first half of the course, on the, the half marathon portion, um, I passed up all the aid stations. I was cold. I didn't think that I needed anything to drink. Mm-hmm. And so I just kept running, and I, I didn't fuel up when I went past those. Mm-hmm. When I got to the second half of the race, it was dark. It was cold. I was alone. Uh, the aid stations were further apart. But something happened to me that never happened to me before, and I, uh, I began to feel dehydrated, and I had never happened. Mm-hmm. And I almost thought that I couldn't finish that race. But when I started to realize what was happening to me because I was disoriented, my body wasn't functioning the way I wanted it to, and um, most people might quit Mm. because they were sick, Mm. but I began to refuel. And little by little, I just kept moving forward, just kept moving forward till I began to feel the strength again. But what I realized on that is you can't pass up the aid stations. Mm. They're there on purpose, Mm. right? And so even as Christians, when we go to church, you know, when we have these opportunities to have people pour into us, right? As leaders, we can pour out and we can pour out and we can pour out. We don't think that we need it for ourselves. We Mm. can pass up our own aid stations. But you get a little bit further down the road and you're going to start feeling the results of that. But you got to keep pouring into you because I want to be a blessing to other people. But if I don't take care of me, right, we're going to talk about balance and some other things, then I'm going to be um, very distracted. I won't have anything left to pour into and I will be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. I've learned some great, great lessons um, along the way in running. But this is one of the greatest things. You got to keep going. One step at a time, one foot at a time, because even if I sat down at those aid stations to recover, I could sit there, I could sit there, I could sit there, and the race can still be going. Mm. I'm only delaying the process. I'm only delaying progress. I still have to get up, put feet to my faith, even if it's slow, even if it's baby steps forward, incremental progress is still progress, Mm -hmm. and I'm still going to accomplish my goal as long as I keep moving forward. Wow. You know, I had a question, you referenced it, uh, a question later about what it looks like to balance career and personal life. And I think a lot of that's driven because people among the church right now Mm -hmm. are asking about uh, women who are joining parts of leadership. We have it so strong in our Mm -hmm. minds for women to be involved with their children and their household Mm -hmm. that there's almost this question mark of, well, how do you balance that with a career life? But I think it's also fair to flip the question and say, have men been absent from their households and their families (laughs) as fathers? And if we... That's like a very common thing in American culture and in movies, men needing to be to re-engage yes, their families. Yes. So that's, I think that's a funny question to ask. Yes. But you touched it so strong with that, uh, with, with the answer to what, what is the analogy of running a race? What is that speaking to in a Christian's life? Well, I'll have two questions here. Um, number one, I want you to talk about, and we can do this later on, but we'll talk about the unity 
of a wife and a mm-hmm, husband mm-hmm. who are working for the Lord for their family yes. and for ministry. Yes. And the, the second question is, what does it look like for that same situation when they're dealing with burnout, mm-hmm. when they're having to balance a very demanding ministry or career with family? Yes. So um, I do give the analogy that, um, you know, when, when God set up um, marriage, it was the perfect example of the Trinity, of unity. Mm-hmm. You'll see the Trinity all throughout, examples of the Trinity, mm-hmm. uh, all throughout Scripture. But you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He's the greatest example of unity and how leadership and a unit should function. Unity and in peace moving forward with mm-hmm. one mind, one heart, one direction. At ISO, we always strive to provide discounts and incentives for our students. Now, we're thrilled to announce our best value ever, the ISO All Access Pass. For just $99 per month, any student can access our entire learning platform. An ever-expanding library of fascinating, groundbreaking teaching at your fingertips for the average price of just one ISO course. There has never been such a prime opportunity to pursue your biblical education. Students in many traditional schools pay $100 to learn every day for every single course. With the All Access Pass, that amount gives you access to our entire course catalog. At ISO, you can learn from world-class teachers on a wide variety of subjects, all at your own pace. With the subscription-based model of the All Access Pass, there are no obligations to put yourself in debt for decades. If you're hungry to learn about the Word, there's never been a better value. That's countless hours of teaching and materials with no limit on how much you can learn. Now, more than ever, ISO is excited to connect the Word with the world. Go to isow.org to get started with the All Access Pass today. So in the Garden of Eden, um, he sets up the first example of team leadership with the man and the woman Mm -hmm. and him being the third, right? And so uh, we work together. The Bible talks about that they uh, were to use um, dominion, not domination, Mm -hmm. and to value each other's gifts the way that he created us. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have a lot of thoughts about the valuing of those things, but when we value each other's talents and gifts and that they work differently but with the same purpose in mind, um, that's what we do. There were different functions of, of the God, the triune uh, mm-hmm. trinity, and and us as, um, as a mom, as a dad, a husband, as a wife, and how we lead together in unity but in different functions. Mm. And so I'm very thankful to have um, a husband who also is like-minded in ministry. Uh, He's the greatest example uh, of a leader that I know. Um, He's the one that has propelled me out in Mm. ministry and cultivates those things. Uh, He is the greatest leader of a home that I I know. And uh, I hope that our children see that, uh, that when they are gone, uh, it's still going to be me and Edwin Lipsy and mm-hmm. Jesus, right? And so we're going to lead together, and um, but we have our own functions. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do a lot of things uh, within the house that maybe he doesn't do, but he does a lot of things outside the house that I don't know. People have to find that mm-hmm. balance of what they do and what they do well and what they prefer not to do. That's in your own family unit and finding peace there. It doesn't have to look the same from my home Mm -hmm. as it looks for your home. My husband is an amazing cook and griller, and he loves to do that. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm just a simple, let's put it in the microwave, girl, and let's get on. But you know what? We function well together, so find what works well for you. Now, does that mean that life doesn't get overwhelming? Absolutely not, because we all have our own um, things that pull us. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, my husband, he's also an avid runner, and he's an Ironman. You know, he is a great athlete, but he's pulled in his own ministry directions, and I'm pulled in mine. Um, But for our boys and for our daughter, we minister to them differently. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, as the dad, uh, he has a different role for the boys Mm -hmm. that he does for our daughter. Uh, This is why it's daddy's girl. Mama's mm-hmm. boy, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. we usually love those boys just for who they are. But the dad, their position is to raise men mm-hmm. and vice versa for the mom. You know, I have to train up my daughter to be a young woman of, mm-hmm. of faith. Um, and he just loves her just like she is. So we have different roles, um, but we come back with one mind, one heart, one purpose mm-hmm. to lead together our children. And um, so 
hopefully that answers that question. But that doesn't mean that life doesn't get overwhelming in our own aspects of ministering in life. And I think it was about 2017, and uh, our daughter had uh, graduated high school. She was at Lee. She was engaged to be married. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we're from Texas. And uh, we had all of our family back in Texas, and I had to plan wedding functions and things for them to be able to participate, but we lived here in Tennessee. His side of the family lived in Georgia, so we had mm. a bunch of these logistics that were happening just spread out. I was new to Tennessee. I didn't feel like I could ask people, which when we take on all this responsibility for ourselves, we think, mm -hmm. I can do it, I can do it, I can I can do it. Sometimes we, we weaken underneath the, the load yeah. of that. Um, I was planning, you know, a new year for our women's ministry. I had these ministry assignments outside of church. Uh, my boys were coming up. They had their own uh, things happening, their wrestlers mm -hmm. and these all events. Mm -hmm. So the balance between those uh, became very great when I threw in um, – the event of the wedding, the showers, all mm. those are the things because you can have such a busy life, which I lead one, I'm sure you do too, yeah. but you add one more thing to that weight, like a feather on top, yeah. and things just kind of come toppling down. And I found myself in that um, at the end, I think 2017 it was, and um, maybe 16, <clears throat> and I would leave my driveway just overwhelmed with life. You know, mm -hmm. I would go to sleep at night and I would wake up more tired in the morning than I was the night before because my mind would race of all these things and all these obligations that I needed to do because I wanted to do them all, mm -hmm. right? And it's hard to say no for those things, but I just take them on and my mind would just race at nighttime and I would be more tired in the morning than I was the night before. Yeah. And I would pour, pull out of my driveway and I always have to have a scripture for everything that I go through, a scripture and a song. And uh, I would say, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do this. I can do this. All the while I was just getting weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. You see, I didn't understand the power that was really behind that scripture. It wasn't until then when I really needed it, like life to me, like bread mm -hmm. to me, like bread to the eaters, what the Bible calls it. And until one day, I would, I would say the scripture every day when I pull out and I would just cry. I would say, I can do this, I can do this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. To one day, I know it had to be Holy Ghost breathe. I said, I can do this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can, and I will. And something went off inside of me, Matthew. It was like, I can, and I will. It was like the warrior inside of me rose up and said, enough's enough, Don, mm -hmm. you can. But do you choose to use it? You see, I can means I have an ability within me. I can. I can do this hard thing. I can make it through this time of, of crisis. I can make it through this moment. I can. I have an ability, mm -hmm. right? We often have this ability. I can eat right. I can. Mm -hmm. I can. I can. I can. I, I can often means I can, but I might, mm -hmm. and I might not. But in that moment, I realized that I can and I will. Paul he had the understanding because the Bible says that a few verses before, I, Philippians 4, 13, that he had learned whatever state he's in to be content. Mm. He had learned through those things that he had gone through. Everything in life that we go through is for a learning process so that we can make it through the next test and trial. Wow. And we have to be able to learn, to absorb it, to understand that it's not for our harm, mm. Jeremiah, right, but for our good to teach us, to prosper us, to give us a hope for our future, for the next part mm -hmm. that comes our way. I can and I will, but I will says, I choose to authoritatively use that ability. Faith without works is dead, yeah. right? Abraham mm -hmm. and James, again, you all will go back to that book over and over. It's a book that changed my life, but it says that Abraham made his faith complete mm -hmm. by what he did, mm. right? So you can have incomplete faith yeah. if you don't choose to use that ability. I can believe all day that I can make it through this situation and I can get weaker and weaker and weaker because That's I'm right. not doing anything about it. Mm. I'm just believing the lies of the enemy and I don't, I'm too weak. I'm not going to make it through. Oh, no. But when the warrior rises up and says, I can mm. and I will. You see, that's what Paul innately meant. But because our society tries to dumb down the gospel... We don't understand the power behind it because in our society, we weasel our way out of every situation that mm -hmm. we can, right? We don't want to take the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we want the easy way out. Mm -hmm. Most times people will say, I said I could, but I didn't say I would. Mm. Do you understand how in our society, we will weasel our way out? But that's not what it. Paul, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? But Paul, he knew. So when he said, I can, he already knew that he could. Mm. And so he had proven that. But we have to prove it. 
We all have to learn. We all have to take, and I can't take your test and you can't take mine. It's my own personal test, wow. but they will come not for our harm, but so that we prove that we've learned it, wow. right? You can't move to the next level unless we prove that we learn it. And I can and I will, the book comes from that because I got stronger and stronger the more that Jesus proved to me that I can make it through one day at a time, one choice at a time, one moment at a time. The wedding came out great. The, all the different things and different states I had to accomplish turned out great. Mm -hmm. My boys didn't miss anything. The year for my women's ministry came out great. The ministry assignments that I did. And the Lord proved to me, I can. And, but I have to choose to use that right and that ability that he's put into my hand. Um, I would like to think that he's going to do everything for me. Mm -hmm. But he provides it for me as a gift, and I have to pick it up, wow. and I have to begin to use it because he's my partner, right? Mm -hmm. And in the greatest of partnerships, both partners have to be active. He is always active, but I have to choose to be active as well for that dynamio's power mm -hmm. to be enacted. Wow. You know, I think about a few scriptures through what you're talking about and the contents of your book where Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow oh. don't, or don't let its worries crush you today. <laughs> Correct. Right. <laughs> worry about whatever today yes, has. Yes, tomorrow has enough trouble. Don't borrow tomorrow's worry. And I think about Paul. One of the, one of the most powerful scriptures that he said that, that has influenced my life is in 2 Corinthians, I believe. He said, today's the day of salvation. Mm. He said, right now it's at your mouth. It's yes. even on your lips. Yes. And that sounds like a Pentecostal <laughs> preacher, doesn't it? <laughs> it because does. it's like everybody says, well, I'm going to do good. Yes. I'm, we're we're going to figure this out. But Paul said, no, 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 not tomorrow. Mm. Not one day. Do it right now. Yes. That is so encouraging. Yes. You know, Mark Batterson um, said something profound in one of his books, and uh, he said, count the day or it will be discounted. Mm. Do today what you can do because it will still be there tomorrow. And we count things that are important to us. Mm. And even when I was writing uh, the book, I can, I will, because I knew the Lord wanted me because I began to share this, um, what, what I had gone through with other people, right? We give hope mm -hmm. away everywhere we go because mm -hmm. I would say, you can, but you have to choose to use that ability. And I would begin to share and people would be encouraged by it. And I knew the Lord wanted me to write a book about it, but I had never done that. You know, I'm a talker mm -hmm. and a number are my thing. You know, my degree is in business. And oh. so I lead a lot of, um, of the office and the administrative portion of the ministry. And so uh, that's always been mine. But, but when the Lord asked me to step out and write a book, I thought, oh, no, no, no. You know, Lord, I don't even like to sit down and read a book. I'll mm -hmm. listen to Audible because mm -hmm. I'm always yeah. on the go. So I read them. I put them in, in me. But you know, I have a hard time sitting still to, you know, there are people that mm -hmm. love that. Me, I, I need it in my ear while I'm running, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, but I had to be able to give these things away. You can, you will, but he wanted me to put it into a book. And I thought mm -hmm. that was too big for me. Um, so I just kind of appeased him. I thought, I'll do a Bible study. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, let me just teach it to my women's ministry, teach it to the church. And that's, that's good. It propelled me, but that's not good enough. And uh, Mark Batterson's um, statement that he said, count the day or it will be discounted. And so I would have to begin writing. And um, I would write day one. Mm. And I would begin just writing. Day two, begin writing without interruption. You know, I got to day um, 21 and I woke up and I realized I missed that day. It was very uh, overwhelming for me at that moment because, you know, my boys were very active and we had been on the road with their tournaments and things and we got in at like 1 a.m. And mm. I realized that next morning when I got up, I missed day 21. I was so defeated at that moment, and I won't forget it. I was really upset with myself and with the devil because I was like, mm. such distractions because we can allow those things to mm. overwhelm us. And our dreams and our goals, these purposes for our life, they get relegated to the bottom, right? But we have to be very intentional to make sure that we accomplish the purpose we've been set on this earth to do. Mm. And in balancing life and home and children, you have to be very intentional to make sure that we're doing the purpose God put us on this earth to do. And that day, I purposed in my heart, I'll do more, I'll write more, I'll speak more, and devil, you're going to be so sorry. Wow. You'll be so sorry. Mm -hmm. I wrote more that day than I did the first 20 days combined. Mm -hmm. And I had to begin again. I can, I will begin again. I have so many different messages and things that apply to I can 
but I choose to, mm. right? Because we can sit down in the ashes and the disappointment, the frustration, and you can stay there. You can stay stuck just like you can at that aid station on a marathon, but you have to get up again and you have to keep moving forward baby mm. step at a time. Do you know that in my journal and in that writing, I got today, because that second day I went to day one B <laughs> mm-hmm. and I began running again. <laughs> I got to day one C because something happened. I got all the way to day one K as I began again. And I began again. I began again. But I wasn't going to be stopped. I was going to begin again. It took me till day one K to finish that book. Five years, though, in the making. Wow. Five years. Uh, But it wasn't until Mark Batterson's uh, words in that book, count the day or it will be discounted, that was at year four. Mm -hmm. And um, when I said, this is the moment and this is the time I can, I will begin again and I can and I will finish. Wow. Wow. Woo. Well, I I think about something that I think about right now. Um, Something my father-in-law said to me. Uh, when my wife and I were getting ready to be married, but I've got a, I've got a great wife. <laughs> She's in studio right now with our audience. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was talking about Proverbs 31, which is so mm-hmm. often preached about. Yes. But when it says it talks about uh, the kind of woman, and the word used in Hebrew is valor. Mm. He says a woman of yes. valor, yes. which means like a warrior. Yes. Like yes. A, it's the same word yes. used throughout Hebrew. Yes. And the, the main thing that overwhelms people about the woman described yes. there is how industrious yes. she is, how yes. much she accomplishes. Yes. And it brings it even brings honor to her husband because yes. everybody in the city is like, yes. man, your wife's getting everything done <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. So, it, it, But what you've been describing this whole time sounds like the mindset. Mm. If someone says, I'm going to be, I'm going to have valor. Yes. I'm going to have strength, yes. and I will do great things for yes. the Lord. And he, I, he's already said in his word he's going to help us. Yes. You, you're describing that. Mm, yes. I think you're really describing the motivation mm. of There's that. There's nothing weak about being a Christian, mm-hmm. first of all. right? It takes that tenacity and that perseverance, but especially as a woman leader, and I do love that it calls that valor mm-hmm. um, because I don't think that women are weak or timid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we thrive in our purpose. I don't want my purpose to be confused with my husband's purpose mm-hmm. or anyone else. I want to move in my lane, in my purpose, because I don't want to get to heaven and uh, the Lord say, what did you do with what I put in your hand? And I said, well, mm-hmm. I was busy doing their job or mm-hmm. do busy doing it. No, Don, what did you do with what I asked you to do, specifically you? Because I'm not going to stand before the Lord for your purpose. Mm-hmm. I have a purpose that he's created me specifically for, and I want to thrive in that. I want to accomplish that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to come up short. I want to live to die empty. I wow. want to have nothing left to wow. give. Not that I'm ex- uh, that I'm expended and that I'm tired. No, that I have given everything away that I have been created to do. Mm-hmm. I don't want to take my potential to the grave, mm-hmm. right? Miles Monroe talks about your potential and that the wealthiest deposits on planet Earth can be found in our graveyards. Because mm-hmm. people take their potential to the grave with them. All the books that could have been written, the songs, the sermons, the people they could have helped. But they didn't want to step out because they were intimidated. No, I'm going to do it afraid and I'm going to continue to give. And I'm going to die with all my purpose and potential poured out on people as best I possibly can. I'll still do it afraid. Hmm. I'll still move forward. The fiercest of warriors still go to battle. That doesn't mean that they don't have... Um, Uh, worries Mm. or anxieties about that, but it means that they still go forward. I'm going to take my shield of faith and my sword of the spirit, and I'm going to move forward. I'm going to take all of those things. One's offensive, but one is, you know, defenses. I'm going to keep pressing forward for my own purpose. I'm not going to take on anybody else's. I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. But what God has called me to do, and that's to give hope away. Wow. When you talk about valor, when you talk about it, not just in a, a woman's life and in a man's life, but what does it look like to have that kind of strength in the household mm. and unity between uh, a wife and a husband mm. when they're doing things for the Lord? How do they keep uh, the priorities right in their life? How do they keep that balance? How do they encourage one another and keep each other in that place of valor? Mm. My husband is one of the greatest leaders that I know, mm. and he has cheered me on in so many different situations. And I love that my children 
get to see the teamwork because I am his biggest fan. Mm. He's the greatest preacher that I know. Mm. I want everyone to know it. I want to honor him in front of other people. And he does the same for me. And together we unify that when we speak it out, especially in front of our children. Mm-hmm. My son, my youngest son, um, about a year or so ago, he said that he was sitting in class and one of his um, teachers said that his parents, they uh, got divorced as soon as uh, he was grown. Mm -hmm. And so he's never remarried because um, the parents were just together because of the children. And uh, my my son said, well, that won't happen to my parents. He said, because they love us way more or they love each other way more than they love us. (laughs) I want them to know that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's healthy. Yeah. Right. I, we had each other first mm-hmm. and then they were a gift and a blessing to our life, not the opposite way around. Yeah. And we want to train up our children to love their spouse mm-hmm. as much because, right, they're going to have to leave home. Right. They're going to have to leave their father and the mother and they will cleave to one another. I want my children to see a healthy family first mm-hmm. and foremost, because out, before even ministry, we have our home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ministry is a gift beyond that and we tag team together matter of fact we are getting to to do uh you know conferences and things together we'll be going to italy um Mm -hmm. soon and i'll be preaching you know a friday night and a saturday morning he's finishing up on the sunday morning so i love that we do that together but you know i never even stepped out into um speaking on a stage until he encouraged me to do so. Mm, I wouldn't have done that because I came from a more um, conservative background and uh, where women uh, weren't really allowed to do that. We were Mm -hmm. allowed to teach, uh, to do Sunday school, those type of things. And that was the way that I was raised in my formative years. And uh, I accepted that mentality. Never would I say uh, I was going to preach took me a long time before I would even say that word. Mm. I would say I'm just going to speak or I would say I'm going to teach. I've done lots and lots of Bible studies, you know, and I do that. uh, And I love that. I thrive there. But when he was the one that encouraged me to speak on a Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. talk about fear and intimidation, new things that arose, I didn't realize that I had such an insecurity there. But he has cheered me on and oh. modeled it for me, and I, I value his opinion. And he so gently leads me in ways and mm. teaches and kind of mm. says these kind of things. And, and he's just been a great help and supporter. And I'm so thankful that he is secure in himself, um, mm-hmm. that he is not intimidated by that, but thrust me into leadership as well. Mm. And I honor him for that. What would you say to young men and a younger, a younger generation in general, but young men who one day are going to be fathers and, mm. and husbands of wives yeah. and uh, already could be our sons to mothers yeah. and possibly brothers to sisters? What would you say to them to encourage the women in their life that feel a calling of God, a calling to ministry, to do yes. great things for the Lord? Um, to celebrate one another's differences, first mm. of all. You know, um, we are a great tag team uh, in ministry. We planted our first church when I was just barely 20. You know, I was two weeks past being 20. And um, uh, this is the great thing about team leadership is that we make up the different um, weaknesses and strengths. But that's the great thing about team leadership. Mm -hmm. And so value those things together and that they can be used for leadership. Um, For my husband to see that um, that I was gifted and to celebrate that, um, mm-hmm. it, to, to thrust me into that, please, for, for those that are coming up to understand that we can do things together and we're never going to be in competition, but we're one unit mm-hmm. um, for one mind, one purpose, and we celebrate and cheer one another on. So encourage those giftings within your family unit and uh, be there to celebrate them and cheer one another on. Wow. And what would you say to young women who are seeking God and feel that calling mm-hmm. themselves who are saying, uh, you know, Pastor Lipsy, I, I feel like I'm kind of in a culture where I'm not encouraged as a woman, but I, I want to serve the Lord. Or maybe I'm dealing with insecurities mm-hmm. like you yourself described, and I want to serve the Lord. What would you say to encourage them? You know, I think it is a, a continual journey with Jesus. Mm-hmm. We have to learn him in every single stage that we are in. There are moments in my life that I remember thinking, man, I want to do what she's doing on that stage, or I want to do that. And I remember being at a conference, and I was about 27. I had already been a pastor, you know, for mm-hmm. seven years and teaching studies and things. And I remember the Lord saying just so softly, not yet. Mm-hmm. 
not yet. I remember that stunned me. It actually hurt my heart thinking, what, God? You don't think I can do that? No. You see, there were different things that I needed to learn wow. along the way. So it was like pouring new wine into an old wineskin. Mm -hmm. It couldn't hold that anointing. I wasn't ready enough for that, that I could hold that and be the right kind of example to other people. There were things I needed to learn. I still had little children. And for myself, mm -hmm. at that moment, I still had some things that were over around me. God's not going to put more on me than I can handle at a time. Mm -hmm. Right? We may mm -hmm. think it's going to kill us. But at that point, I had small children together, and my <laughs> life was extremely busy. He yeah. knows what I can handle, but he's not going to put more on me than what I can hold in an anointing. He's a good steward. Mm -hmm. right? So even in the amount he pours out for us in teaching our lessons and in our anointing, um, he's not going to put more on me than it's got, I'm going to let fall through me. So um, I would say take it one moment at a time, learn and glean, honor those above you, take in wisdom. Uh, I talk a lot about Esther and how she was able to take in valuable wisdom um, from those that were over her, including mm -hmm. men um, from Mordecai and from um, even Haggai. Uh, you know, so we have to take those things in till the moment comes where the roles reverse and we need to be the ones in mm -hmm. leadership. So take what you are right now, continue to learn, use where you can go, be open to what the Lord brings to you, do it afraid, no matter what it looks like. I remember being a pastor's wife at 20 and having these people who had been, you know, Christians and, and they were senior citizens. And how am I going to lead them? How am I going to teach them? What could I possibly know that they don't already know? You know, I'm just barely out of bows and puffy sleeves, you know, and now I'm their pastor's wife and teaching them. And so I had to um, come to the realization, um, it's okay to have other people love me and give me wisdom. Be mature enough to allow that and not to push that away. Mm. It's good. People will will protect you when they love you. Mm -hmm. wow. So to understand that when the older generation tries to give you advice, it's not that you're always doing something wrong. It's because they love you and they want you to grow and they mm. want to help you accept it, mm -hmm. enjoy that. Um, but even when I was teaching, I started out with video studies. I let somebody else teach it, and mm -hmm. I was the facilitator. Right. So we have to do where we are at that moment in time. And I began to learn and I began to grow until I was comfortable enough of writing my own studies mm -hmm. and leading my own and writing different, you know, things for other people and then stepping out. It is a growth. All of life is a growth. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Enjoy where you are. Learn what he wants, because if you don't learn it here, you can't have the anointing for here. Oh. Right. But just mm -hmm. like Paul said, for I have learned to be content where I am. Therefore, I can do this now. Wow. It's a test here, a test of faith. Once we learn it in James, right, we will have trials of many things. Mm. When we learn here, a new test, a new trial, a new trust, and it continues on and on and on. Wherever you are, be content, learn from that so that you can progress. Wow. My closing question is this. What does the mindset and the difference look like for someone who's a leader mm. between dominance and mm. dominion? Great. Great question. Um, again, back into the Garden of Eden, you know, where mm. the, the Lord creates um, man. He creates them male and female. The mm. greatest example of the trinity of leadership that there is. And he says, go multiply, be fruitful, and have dominion. Doesn't say domination for one or the other. My husband often in his wedding ceremonies, he'll say, you know, the Lord removed a rib from Adam's side. Not the mm -hmm. head, not the foot, so that one would lord over the other. Mm -hmm. But in teamwork, we value one another in all the aspects. And so there is a dominion there. That means that there is leadership mm -hmm. moving forward. And in the domination portion, that is the suppression of one or the other. Mm. I really feel like if we would value one another's gifts and callings and leadership, male and female, the way that we're supposed to, to have the authority to forward the gospel together, mm -hmm. we would have less of a gender identity issue wow. amongst people today wow. because we have women wanting to be men because they see that men have this. We have male wanting to be this because they see this. Mm -hmm. If we would just value and celebrate the way that God made you to lead, the mm -hmm. way God made me to lead and value mm -hmm. those, celebrate those, be examples of how that functions properly in one mind, one heart, then we won't have our young people that are so uh, disturbed of saying, well, I want to be that because they have this, or I want to be that because, and sometimes they don't even know, mm -hmm. but because it's a suppression, they can't do this or that. 
know if we see it, an equality not being that we're the same, but being valued for our differences. There's a value in equality and mm. in equity, and that's the way that he formed us, God, male, and female, working together, mm. one mind, one heart, to further the gospel together. One mind, one heart, to further the gospel together. How incredible, Pastor Lipsy. It's been so great to have you on. Thank you so much. It's been yes. my joy. And we just we do want to remind you that you can go to Women in Ministry on ISO.org. You could also look up Pastor Lipsy's, uh, Pastor Lipsy's book, I Can, I Will. We'll provide the link for that below on YouTube. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you around the corner again with another episode of ISO Insights. Mm -hmm.